Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This time we're up with one topic that I actually completely agree with, just based on the title here. Uh, Germany could not win World War II. Um, this, is, this, this video is from a few years ago. It has a couple of million views. Um, but I wanted to check this one out because this was suggested in the comments. Um, if you have a video that you would like me to react to, join the Discord. Link is below and put a video in reaction video suggestions. That's where I put everything um, just so that all the videos are there and then I can check them more easily than trying to go through individual YouTube comments and everything like that. Um, last video was World War II every day with army sizes. That one was 49 minutes long. <laughs> so I'm going to try and make this one a little bit shorter. Um, but yeah, without that, let's get right into it. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, subscribe. Uh, almost 70% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed. So if you wouldn't mind hitting that button, very much appreciate it. Let's get right into it. I love Futurama, by the way. I finished fine-tuning my what-if machine. It can answer any what-if question accurate to within one-tenth of a plausibility unit. Who wants the machine <laughs> to show them an alternate reality? Oh, oh, I want to know if Germany wins if Hitler stops making decisions. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. This is the this is all the internet armchair historians. And... Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. I have one. Do they win if they Mars produce the mouse tank? <laughs> okay, that one's great. That reminds me of the Hoi Four, uh, somewhat of the Hoi Four community in the in the Wunderwaffen uh, cult. Cult, sorry, cult. Uh, that's that's cold in German. The the Wunderwaffen cult that thinks that ah, if they just had had this piece of technology, uh, that's that's really funny. <laughs> Take that machine. Show me what would happen if they took Moscow. Yeah, another one. Yeah, that if they had it taken Moscow, it would have been all over. That's so plausible, I can't believe it. Can that go People away? People love Thank rooting you. for the underdog. These stories strike a chord with us at a very basic level, and you can tell this by how popular these stories are in media. This also translates to real world stories, although oh. real life does not have a plot that always turns in the underdog's favor. So there's this kind of romantic. Great series there, by the way, called Unsere Mutter, Unsere Vater, which means Our Mothers and Our Fathers. I think it's called Generation War. In English, highly recommend. It's about World War II from the German side. It gets a little over dramatic in some parts. Shocking, World War II being dramatic. Um, but highly recommend it. Check it out. Anticism connected to fighting for a lost cause that a lot of people assign to a lot of real world groups. One of these you see talked about a lot is the German army of World War II. That if only True. dumb Hitler hadn't been in charge, or if different choices were made, that the war would have turned out different. And a lot of these arguments seem to hold water on the surface, but upon reflection, mostly miss the point or do not make a significant enough change to sway anything. True. These are my yep. favorite how yep. Germany could have won scenarios and how they're wrong. This is probably the most popular one is the just take Moscow. Uh, I think this is sort of, uh, <laughs> sort of directed at uh, internet historians, including myself. I am not a professional historian. I just like history, so I'm one of these internet historians as well. But uh, there is a certain sect of sort of the the, the what if Germany or or whatever you want to call them um, that think that uh, they also really like Hoi Four too. Uh, that think that ah, if it's just this one thing, so I hear this one all the just time. Just take Moscow. But if the yeah. Germans had just Definitely driven the onto popular. Moscow and taken it, the Russians would have capitulated. But it is rarely backed up with evidence as to why. Even in the True. memoirs of German generals after the war. They constantly mentioned that the drive to Moscow would have meant victory in the East. And I think the reason for this is that they model the Russian campaign after the French campaign. In the French yes. campaign in 1940, yes. the French yes. surrender once Paris is cut off from its forces and looks like it's about to fall. Using this model, a lot of people think that the exact same would apply to Russia. The only problem with this is Russia is a whole different animal, both politically and geographically. Stalin was going to put every man, woman, and child in the Soviet Union between him and the advancing Germans. And this is exemplified by the way the Red Army fought the war, often trading casualties for time. So if Moscow was taken, sure, it's a political and also logistical defeat, given that the rail network was centered around it. But sure. no way do I think Stalin is just going to shrug and say, well, we tried after Moscow was taken. And with that, we would probably see the Soviet Union fighting to the bitter end, just like the Germans did in reality. This is also backed up by real-world history from Napoleon's Russia campaign in 1812, where he went on to take Moscow but still lost the war. 
Russia is such a large and vast country that they have the ability to trade casualties and land at a higher rate than any other country can. And therefore, the normal rules of war such as taking the capital and ensuring victory do not apply. Are they not seeing this? Okay, yeah, that was that was perfect. Um, I, I almost have nothing to, to add on top of that. But yeah, absolutely. Um, I think there's, I don't just think that comes from the France campaign. Um, that was also how Napoleon waged war as well, is that once the capital was taken, then basically that was it for the country. Um, and that sort of comes down to the sort of European, uh, I don't know if it's really European, but the sort of understanding of war at the time, where once you took the capital, that was it, the, the, the country was capitulated. However, we know that there was industry in the Urals, right? And so, you know, would have Stalin have backed, you know, maybe would have moved the government, even if he had have stayed in in, uh, in in Moscow, you know, as we're seeing in, in the Battle of Berlin, it, it did take significant, significant amounts of troops and complete air supremacy um, to really take uh, Berlin itself. And so to say that Moscow would have been a, a cakewalk or something and that, you know, that would have been it, they would have just capitulated. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest uh, fallacy. One other thing I want to quickly mention is that a lot of those German generals, um, they really perpetuated a lot of myths after the war um, from some of their writings, one of them being the clean Wehrmacht myth which is to say that the Wehrmacht, they had nothing to do with the, the, the executions of civilians, of partisans, of Jews, of anyone who opposed them, and rather they were just the, the clean professional army. Um, this was sort of reinstated by uh, troops such as, uh, uh, sorry, generals such as Guderian, uh, Manstein as well, and this sort of myth was very, very prevalent for many, many years. Um, there was just sort of all the blame was put onto the AS for all these all these casualties. Um, and, you know, we now know that it's not true upon further reflection. So always, you know, uh, all, all, the, all the personal accounts of, of, of uh, Germany's roles from German leadership that survived the war and were not uh, executed at, at Nuremberg or any of the other uh, trials, um, always take with, take with a grain of salt. Another commonly heard point is that Hitler made terrible decisions and he should have just listened to his generals. Now I'm yep. not here to defend Adolf Hitler, he's a crazy genocidal maniac, let's not make two ways about it, but this isn't always the case. For example, Hitler and the High Command were all in agreement on invading Russia. They all very much wanted to, in their eyes, destroy communism and save Germany, as Hitler laid out in his book. But once yeah. this effort was undertaken, Hitler and his generals began to disagree at times on what moves needed to be made. And once the war is over, many generals in their memoirs begin to claim that Hitler made all the bad decisions, and that if he had just listened to them, the war would have been won. Of course. And one example of this, I already hinted Always at... Always take the generals with a Hitler's generals were convinced that taking Moscow would end the war for many yeah. erroneous reasons I listed previously. For Hitler, Moscow was a general direction in which to head, but was not the final objective. For him, the resources in the Ukraine and the oil fields beyond were yes. a much more important target. Yes. And given Germany's oil shortages, this is a good example of where Hitler was right and his generals were wrong. And actually, a lot of Hitler's so-called mistakes start to make a whole lot more sense once you put it into the context of Germany's fuel shortages. And if you want more information on this, Tick oh. did an excellent video on Germany's oil problem. That was another uh, content creator another suggested to watch. sentiment being wrong is Operation Citadel in 1943. Hitler's generals convinced him that an attack on the Kursk bulge would cripple the Red Army and renew Germany's initiative in the war. Hitler saw this plan as very flawed, though, famously saying, Every time I think about Operation Citadel, my stomach turns over. And seeing how poorly this turned out for the Germans, his premonition was eerily correct. Now, if this was the caricature of Hitler always overriding his generals that is commonly seen, Citadel would have been called off before it was launched. Now, these are just two quick examples, and yes, there are times, especially yes, later in the yeah, war, that's what where I was Hitler bring overrules up. his generals exactly. with poor decisions. Perfect. Perfect. Battle of the Bulge comes to mind. But early in the war, when these decisions really count, Hitler is many times making the right decisions when overruling his generals or going along with them in agreement of a common goal. So, Hitler should have just listened to his generals and he would have won the war, is a moot point. Because many times he did, and his generals were wrong, and many times he didn't, and he turned out to be right. It's all Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler. Yeah, so that's one thing. Um, so there's a couple theories on actually how, um, you know, there's the working towards the Führer theory proposed by Kershaw, um, which sort of paints Hitler not as the sort of soft dictator, which some people thought, 
or the hard dictator where he had control over every single thing, but rather he was sort of vague and aloof enough, and I talked about this in my oversimplified video on Hitler, check that out, um, that he would sort of pit people against each other. So, in, um, so to sort of have that sense, it wasn't always that it's always Hitler, 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 right? It's always about Hitler. It's always about the one man. However, it's important to look at all the staff as well. Uh, to comment on the oil fields issue, that was one thing that Kershaw brought up as well, um, is that that was actually uh, the, the right decision was to pull, uh, I believe it was um, the Southern Group, and to, to capture those significant oil fields. And, uh, and he claims, Kershaw claims that this actually extended the war. Um, and, and actually made it more go towards in Germany's favor, which, yeah, I, I, I agree with that assessment as well, right? The sort of, because fuel shortages were really were the crux of the German army's issues. And obviously, as Hitler became more paranoid and there was obviously the bomb plot, um, there were mass dismissals, there were firings of very, very competent generals, especially through Operation Barbarossa, that led to the downfall However, just to say, oh, just listen to the generals, take a hands-off approach, it would have been fine. I don't think, no matter what would have happened, I don't think Germany could have won World War II. So, yeah, great assessment. And uh, I, this guy's fantastic. What can I say? <laughs> just build more stuff, my favorite. Just build more stuff and it'll be better. Uh, I've talked about the German economy before. I think that was during the uh, the World War II Everyday by Army Size. But let's see what uh, let's see what he has to say. This is actually a point I used to subscribe to. A very honest critique of the German war economy is that it was not on the right footing. And yes. people make this argument usually saying things like Germany should have just made more Panzer IVs instead of pouring resources into the Tiger, or Germany should have built the Luftwaffe back up so they could regain air superiority. And I will give you that the German war economy in many places was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, and especially too, um, in terms of not only the quality, but I mean, there's a famous story, and I've already told this, but I'll just be brief. Uh, Albert Speer went to visit a, an arms uh, manufacturer in uh, an arms factory, sorry, in Berlin in 1943, and he found that all the workers were home, and it was 8 p.m. Right, whereas the United States, um, they were 24/7 by 1943. Um, so it wasn't just the quality issue, but also how it was structured John as well. John Parshall does an excellent lecture on tank production in World War II and really highlights how backwards the German production process was for yeah. armored vehicles. Yeah, and see, and so then you, so the British, um, you know, obviously they had very good tank production as well, but you compare, compare it to the United States, I mean, I mean, God, look at that. ...manufacturing. It mentions how that knowledge can be applied to other types crazy. of war manufacturing. And although once Spear takes over, production is streamlined to a degree, and munitions and weapons yep. production goes up year by year, it's not near where it needs to be to fight this attritional war. So obviously the solution is to just streamline production, sort of how you see in the American model, and this would have given Germany a better chance in the war. Although this is a good criticism, it misses the core issue. The biggest thing Germany was running low on from 1942 Resources. onward is, as I mentioned before, oil. And larger numbers yeah. of tanks and planes wouldn't be any good if there was no fuel to run them. Also, Germany was having manpower shortages as early as 1942 or 43, and along with fuel to run these machines, you need people to crew them. Yeah, and there was a further um, reliance on, on troops such as the Romanians, Hungarians, Bulgarians um, as well, and, you know, I don't exactly have the sufficient proof for this right now. I can't think of specific examples. Um, it's also hard to do when recording a live video. But um, these troops at times were not as motivated as the core German troops, right? So you combine all this and it's like, yes, you're giving more and more in equipment, but when you're running out of manpower and you're having to rely on allies that are not, and Italian troops as well, um, that although strong fighters, not cowards in any way, the motivations are obviously different and that plays a lot into it too. These are just two issues that cannot be remedied by street. Sorry, I think there's a famous quote that uh, the Italian army was, uh, was, was lions led by cowards or something along those lines. Production. At a certain point, Germany is just going to be out of oil and out of men and no amount of additional tanks or planes would operationally be possible. What's the matter, run out of gas? Kinda embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, this one I've never heard before. Just coordinate with Japan. All right. This is another point that deceptively seems to make a lot of sense, as Germany was crushed by a two-front war. It stands to reason that if Japan and Germany, through their alliance, had coordinated an attack on Russia, they would have won. 
And that may honestly be true. A big boost to the defense of Moscow came after mm, Russian troops from Siberia okay. were sent west after the Russo-Japanese non-aggression pact. The only problem with this is that coordination did not and was never going to happen. Yeah. Germany and Japan were allies by circumstance and shared no real common goals with each other. Yeah. And in fact, they're operating in opposition to each other at times. German training of Chinese troops in the 30s as they were fighting the Japanese is a direct example of this. In short, neither side was going to stick out its neck for the other. In fact, Russia as a common enemy was probably the only instance in which they would have, and even then they did not. The reason for Japan not wanting to do this is mostly colored by the Japanese experience against the Soviets at the Battle of Konkan Gol, please forgive my pronunciation, where the Red Army gave the Imperial Army a very bloody nose in an undeclared border conflict. This incident convinced the Japanese to not go through with any action that would provoke the Soviet Union as they did not want war with them since they were already fighting China and would soon be fighting the United States. This avoidance of provoking the yeah. Soviet Union went far enough that during the war in the Pacific between Japan and the United States, the Japanese refused to sink any U.S. merchant ships headed to the Soviet Union. So, the Japanese attacking the Soviet Union directly flies in the face of the intentions and characteristics of the Japanese High Command. To the point where it strays out of potential history kill yourself into the realm of fantasy <laughs> you have screwed me again japan right so one thing i want to bring up too in terms of uh japan and soviet relations is that there's a fascinating theory and this is probably something that i'll that i'll do a video on at some point um of that the nuclear bomb was not justified um because the japanese were going to surrender anyways due to their fear of being invaded by the Soviet Union. Um, and so while I won't get entirely into that discussion right now, there was obviously some some clear uh, fear and uh, willingness to not evoke the Russians in any capacity whatsoever, um, you know, right up until the end. So to say that, yeah, they could have just coordinated one, I'd never heard that before, um, but yeah, I think you made a, a fair point there of, of why that would not have happened. Yeah, more Wunderwaffe, the, the, Hoi, the Hoi 4 community's favorite thing. This is my favorite one. If yeah. they had just made Mine too, actually. design here. Yeah, exactly. It's always the completely ridiculous science fiction-y crap, <laughs> you know, that says, ah, if they just had to made this one thing. And, you know, they did make that one thing. They had the V2s, and it didn't work out. They had the V2s. Right, and they launched a couple on Britain, and it had absolutely no impact on the wars. The war may have gone differently, and it's the idea that this thing, or this thing, or yeah. this thing, yeah, would somehow have single-handedly <laughs> lengthened the war. There are a few yeah, fan favorites for picks of these. The one I see most often being the mouse, the ridiculous 200-ton yeah. behemoth that in reality would have been awesome target practice for Allied fighter bombers, <laughs> and something for Allied soldiers to gawk at once it had run out of fuel and had to be abandoned. Yep. Or German jet aircraft that, although cutting edge and superior to what the Allies had, still couldn't have been applied in a large scale due to the aforementioned fuel and personnel problems. And the list for these things goes. And mind you, those jets, uh, those V2s, were actually are, uh, were were worked on by slave labor as well. Right, that's one thing on. to to not forget. A personal too. pet peeve of mine in this category is the what if question about the German atomic program, and the claim that if they had applied themselves, the Germans could have come up with an atomic weapon first. No. This notion, no, though, just possible. like that of Japan invading Russia, very quickly falls into the category of fantasy, once looked at for three main reasons. One, many of Germany's top scientists were expelled in the 30s for being Jewish, automatically limiting German atomic capabilities. Yep. And actually, many of these scientists went on to work in the American nuclear program. So to make this win scenario work, you automatically have to make the Nazis tolerant of Jews, which is not going to happen. <laughs> Two, the German atomic program is all but cancelled by 1942. As Speer put it, we got the view that the development was very much at the beginning. The physicists themselves didn't want to put much into it. Which works into my third point, that Hitler saw atomic science as Jewish science and pointed the focus of German development towards conventional weapons. So we're not okay. even talking about an atomic race between the US and Germany, as it was barely being pursued by the Germans. And to give a what-if scenario about it would fly directly in the face of what Hitler stood for. And this gets into the bigger problem with this question. That even if Germany does produce these wonder weapons, and extends the war, it's only going to extend it long enough to be the first country to get nuked, due to the Germany first policy of the yeah, Allies. Yeah, good point. Are you making this jet plane? Hmm? Or a remote control that can turn you into Super soldier. Hmm? Hmm? Or is it just another dumb tank? Yeah, exactly. But almost nothing to say on that one, I think I pretty much covered it.
Now these are just a handful of points that people bring up when talking about how Germany could have won, but there are many more that I didn't go into that are equally baseless, such as the Germans True. should have and could have invaded England, even though the Kriegsmarine would oh, not be able to that's support a, a large amphibious That's another attack. good one. And a much larger Royal Navy would have probably sunk the invading force before it even reached the shores. True. Or that Barbarossa should have taken place earlier, even though it wasn't really the winter or the rainy season that stopped the Germans. It was a lack of supplies that needed to be brought up. Yes. For more info on that, check out this lecture by David Stahill. You'll see people bringing up scenario after scenario that bends reality and character motivations very widely to craft a scenario that Germany could win. But here's my point. Germany would not have won World War II no matter what way you slice it. The fact True. of the matter is, this is a country within realistic expectations. That is too small and too short on resources to take on the three largest world powers at once, especially given the erroneous actions and motivations they have. Basically, the Germans dealt themselves a bad <laughs> hand and played it poorly. And the only way that's going to change is if you bend time and space to their liking with the benefit of 2020 hindsight. Yeah, All things exactly. that are not going to happen in reality. Yeah, so I mean... Yeah, so... What can I say? Yeah, that was that was that was brilliant. I'm really looking forward to part two. I'm gonna release that next, so look forward to part two. It's gonna be out uh, not tomorrow, but the day after. And let me know what you guys think. Do you think in any way that Germany could have won World War II? Are there any theories that he didn't cover? Do you think that it's more simple than what if one thing, but rather a multitude of things? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.